What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. I want to give a massive shout out to everyone for a happy 2022. Hopefully you had a safe holiday period and hopefully we have a really good year in 2022. I want to give you guys a shout out for the support that you guys gave me throughout 2021. You guys have been absolutely awesome. So hopefully we can continue that heading into 2022. Starting off with the Suga Metal Exchange updated with some pretty cool stuff. So we're going to go through these characters and determine whether or not each of these individual units are worth it for the given price point. So let's jump over to the metal exchange. This is available right now and it's going to be here until the end of January. So you've got plenty of time to determine whether or not you want to pick up these characters for these metal values. So let's start things off. We have Bartolomeo at 150 points. The thing about Barto is, is that he's not a good unit. The really good thing about him though is his support effects. He attaches to Cavendish and Robin and essentially anytime you're inflicted with paralysis reduce it by three turns a very useful support effect and you know considering uh, with the new year celebration a lot of people would have done a lot of multi pulls and i think a lot of people are going to have a lot of sugo medals left over so if you don't have bato and you need a good paralysis removing support throughout this month of january that's going to be a really nice unit that can attach to robin or cavendish Next up, we have Borsalino. This character is basically terrible in almost every facet. However, there is one really good thing about him, and that is his PvP abilities. After you super evolve him, is going to be a really nice unit to use on slasher teams and shooter teams, and especially if you've picked up Roger and Whitebeard, and you have 6 plus Odin, which is along the way as well. Um, this is a nice un unit to add alongside those two characters in a PvP slasher team. So th that's like the only reason you should be picking up Borsalino. Other than that, though, this unit is pretty bad. Shirahoshi is an interesting one. She has a really cool special that can guarantee you a full board of block slots with really good healing on top of it. That's basically all she really does though. Um, she doesn't really have like that many other really cool redeeming qualities. I don't really suggest picking up this unit honestly. And Dex Sabo is somehow here again. I feel like we literally just had Dex Sabo. I think, it, didn't we just have him in literally the last list? I don't know. Either way, um, Dex Sabo, I mean, he did get a super evolution in the previous month or the month before that. Uh, he's okay, but uh, he's one one of those units you can definitely go without he's not going to be the difference between you clearing content or not his character is okay but definitely not worth the other medals i think definitely picking up borsalino for pirate rumble or picking up Barto for his support effect are way more valuable so those characters that we just talked about were the 150 metal tier moving on up to the 250 metal tier we've got a couple of characters to talk about first one here though is mihawk this unit is bad don't pick him up the next one though is vivi and rebecca now this character is one that you may want to go ahead and invest in because her special ability is very unique in being able to remove blue shield defense up as well as rainbow shield damage reduction completely if they have 10 turns of both it can remove both of it uh, 99 turns of defense up it can remove it 99 turns of rainbow shield it can remove it on top of that it also gives your striker and your cerebral characters a two times color affinity uh which is kind of nice for two turns and remember if you do have roger and whitebeard that character is a striker and a slasher captain this character can partner up really well with those units now their swap effect is also really really good because for cerebral and strikers it changes their strength and deck slots to matching you get 2000 heal at the end of the turn as well as a 2.5 times chain lock and that will activate every single turn every single turn you activate that switch effect this is one of the top units that i've had in my tier list and a lot of people may already know why but this unit is very valuable and if you don't have this unit for 250 medals it's an absolute bargain speaking of absolute bargains v1 kaido at 250 medals this character is wicked i'm pretty sure a lot of people already know how good this unit is the fact that when you start the quest you have cooldown reduction you have a base attack boost of 4x to striker and powerhouse characters but the end of turn damage 400 times his attack at the end of the turn every single turn automatically launching a special as well for the additional 400 times his attack at the end of the turn also every time you enter a new stage it cuts the enemy's health by 20 percent that's really valuable uh just getting a free 20 percent health cut as soon as you enter a stage is ridiculous especially with preemptive attacks that will apply barriers because this will activate before enemy preemptive attacks so if their preemptive puts up a barrier or something like that, it will bypass it, which is awesome. This character is wicked. If you don't have V1 Kaido, I highly suggest picking him up as well. He is awesome. And then the last unit for the 250 metal tier is actually the Red Hair Pirates, or the Shanks crew as dubbed by the community. 
Uh, I still think this character is one of the better units in the game. His captain effect, uh, I mean, it's it's not the greatest when you look at some of the other characters that we get access, access to now. I mean, look at the multiplies, 3.5, and then this one is only 3.25, and in their dual form, they're a 4.5. So obviously, attack multipliers are pretty bad, but one of the great things about it is, is that in his captain effect, he has the passive effect of reducing 10 turns of special bind. That's really nice to have. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times you can hybrid this guy with some other really powerful captain, and even though this character has a little bit weaker multipliers, you can still get through content quite comfortably just due to the fact that, you know, this character can hybrid well with a lot of good units because he's a rainbow captain. Um, but of course, the special ability is very powerful. You get the 3.5 times chain lock for three turns. That's wicked. Um, and of course, when you use their special ability to become their dual form, they actually do end of turn damage. So if you continuously hit perfects, the more perfects you hit, the more end of turn damage this character actually does, which does allow you to actually bypass resilience buffs, for example. But of course, uh, probably one of the most valuable components of this unit is their swap effect, being able to change adjacent slots into matching and also giving all characters a 1.5 times attack boost. So if you do have character like uh, Roger and Whitebeard that just came out with the New Year celebration, you guys already may know how powerful that switch effect is. Well, this is kind of like a nerfed version of that. Um, so if you don't have Roger and Whitebeard, definitely get this guy because that swap effect is going to be very valuable in lots of different teams. Even in teams where this character isn't boosted, it's still a valuable switch effect and a very valuable special effect to have. But then we get to the big daddies, the, the ones that are worth 400 Sugo medals in the medal exchange. So this is a pretty interesting list of characters. The first one here is going to be the Trafalgar Law, uh, dubbed as in, in the community as the Wano Law character. His captain effect is okay. Uh, multipliers are a little bit on the weaker end, but really good defensively with really good passive damage reduction and good healing at the end of the turn. But the special ability is ridiculous. Really good orb change, empty block bomb recovery G and badly matching slots into matching and then he does different effects depending on what class or classes your captain has. So if your captain, when you launch the special, is a fighter slash a striker or a shooter, you get a 2.25 times orb boost to all characters for two turns. But if your captain is a free spirit, driven, cerebral, or powerhouse unit, you get a 2.5 times chain boundary for two turns. And the great thing about it is, is that if your captain is one of each of these classes, you'll actually get both abilities to activate with a chain boundary and an orb boost. This is still one of the best specials in the game because chain boundary is the, like the best chain effect that you can add to your to your team for for damage output, plus good old manipulation, and he has uh, the orb boost as well to all characters. He's a slasher free spirit. He's a psi unit. He's good good class and color combination. This unit is still ridiculously nice, as well as amazing in pirate rumble. Really good for the psi teams. Really good for the slasher teams. The best part about this unit is his passive. The fact that he's able to debuff driven and power how special CT by level 6, speed down level 6, and guard down level 6. Like, this unit is absolutely bonkers in Pirate Rumble. So really good in Pirate Rumble, and also really good in regular play. The next one here is Luffy and Sanji. I'm personally not the biggest fan of this unit, but I know a lot of people are huge fans of this guy. Uh, the good thing about Luffy and Sanji is they are a rainbow captain at the end of the day. They also have a really nice effect in, in all forms of their captain, where they allow you to get overhealing, and that's obviously one of the most powerful components of the unit in general. Overhealing is very, very broken. Their special ability is interesting, where they give you a full board of recovery slots that goes through block orbs, which is nice. They also allow you to heal 50 times their recovery, and the special ability does allow the overhealing as well. So even if you're not using them as the captain to get access to overhealing, when you launch the special, it will still overheal. So that's nice at least. But then if you launch the special and you are at full HP or higher, you actually get a 2.5 times attack boost to all characters. If you're not at full HP, it's only going to be a two times attack boost instead. And that's one of the biggest downsides to the unit is you basically have to make sure you get at full HP. Otherwise, it's only a two times attack boost, which a lot of characters can provide to your team. Uh, they, they switch effect is actually really good though. They make uh, their own slots uh, recovery as well as also treating recovery as beneficial to your team. That is also an annoying component because their special ability changes all slots into recovery and they don't have any component in their kit that will make recovery beneficial aside from their switch effect. So before you launch their special, you do have to make sure that you switch to make it beneficial to your team, unless if you have some type of other effect that can treat it as beneficial. But they also have really good utility of reducing bind, despair, and paralysis for your whole team by one every time you launch that switch ability. So that's a really nice component. They're okay in PvP, but remember it is a Luffy and a Sanji character. So if you use this character, you can't get access to any other Luffy and Sanji on your crew. And because there's so many good Luffys and Sanji,
Sanji's that continuously release, I kind of feel like Luffy and Sanji are just past their use by date. The second last unit in the metal exchange is going to be Zoro Juro, the super type Zoro. So this unit is kind of nice with his captain ability being a dex captain 4.5 and also still boosting all other characters by four times, but also having the really cool effect of resisting special bind by 10 turns. But then once you've taken 20,000 damage or more, his captain effect actually changes where you get a five times attack boost instead. And every time you enter a new stage, you do a 20% health cut, kind of similar to V1 Kaido when his special is launched. Really cool effect actually. When you have that ability active, it's a very powerful captain effect. We can't see his super type special in this screen, but it gives a color affinity boost to your dex units, which is cool. And his special ability will do minus two cooldown to your characters and do damage and also be an orb boost for your dex team. Um, this unit's pretty nice. Um, the thing is, is that he hybrids well with the other really good dex super types in the game, like Final Tap Law, Legend Queen, CP0 Lucci, those guys all work really well with this guy, and if you're in content where you have to deal with special binds, this might be a really good option to use as the captain just to passively get around it, which is cool. Um, and he's okay in PvP as well. If you're running like a dex team, for example, it's really nice to have this guy on the bench, come in late game and just sweep the opponent. Really powerful special when it is in the late game. Not really good at the start of the game though. But either way, Zora is a cool unit, but I don't think it's worth 400 medals. And then the final character of this batch is going to be Ace versus Akainu. Now, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that this is definitely well worth 400 Sugo medals. If you were unlucky enough not to pull this character during the New Year celebration, I think this is a very worthwhile investment. 400 medals for a character like this, I think is just, it's it's a no-brainer. Getting access to Ace, who is the shooter and free spirit captain, and then you got access to Akainu being a driven and a powerhouse captain, driven and powerhouse being, you know, two of the best classes in the entire game, and you got Ace being shooter and free spirit. We know shooter isn't the best, but free spirit is one of the best classes in the game as well. This character's got a great special ability. Akainu has access to the ignition effect when he's ever in inflicted with damage he can just ignite the enemies and do damage to them passively they both have really good versus effect as well providing a conditional boost against ignited enemies they both inflict the ignition effect against the enemies when you launch their versus special as well and both of these characters are very good in pvp a kind of really good for quick teams and then also the ace character really really good for your strength teams um, i think this is easily the most worth it character in this entire list if you don't have it already obviously uh this character is just immensely powerful helps out so many different teams helps out in pvp as well i think it's definitely the best choice that would be my opinion for sure but as for the other characters on this list as we talked about i think bato is actually still a pretty good call just due to his support effect kizaru is really good for pvp if you don't have him um then you've also got Vivi Rebecca, V1 Kaido, Shanks crew, those three are all definitely worthwhile. Just depends on what you want to go for. If you did get Roger and Whitebeard, potentially Vivi Rebecca for some utility in their switch effect, maybe you want to go for that. Um, Shanks crew has a really nice effect. If you didn't get Roger and Whitebeard, maybe you want to get Shanks crew. And then V1 Kaido, he's just a really nice unit, especially if you're a newer player in this game and you don't have V1 Kaido, just getting access to that to just steamroll all the content in the game, at least a lot of the easier beginner stuff is so good uh, and then obviously for the top row i think wano law for sure and also akainu those are the two best units that you should be picking up but i think honestly ace versus akainu is the character that's going to help out immensely in your character box because you can build so many cool teams around those two characters that's what i would suggest anyway but let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section i think this is a really good medal exchange to enter the year of 2022 hopefully you guys enjoyed the video today and if you guys did enjoy it make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video